Welcome to the Author Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I'm Brian. And this is our podcast about anything and everything off road. Um, I was going to mention rally cars because I was trading texts with people, but it's been months since we've talked about rally cars. Mm-hmm. So, um, teaser. Teaser possibly. for twenty two. Yeah, it's probably definitely going to have to be twenty two. We're we're running out of time. In <laughs> <Yeah. 21>. <laughs> <laughs> Not happening now. <laughs> uh, as always, we're socially distanced. It's the only way we can do the show. We did it way before it was mandated. Uh, I'm still in the Midwest. Ross is on the in the Northeast. I was gonna say on the east northeast coast. On the east northeast. I don't. I'm gonna keep blurring. That's, that's a very Midwest thing to say. Yeah, I'm team no coast. Uh, and Brian's in Oregon, so <laughs> we're back to the full spread, coast to coast. We're bi coastal. Could say. Dude, I I was a rower in college, and I could row on either side of the eight man boats, which normally the oar only goes out one side. But if you could do that, you were bi sweptual. And it was the most like there were t-shirts printed. Like the anyone who's a rower who's been to a regatta knows this shirt that I'm talking about because it's like their favorite rowing joke ever is I'm bisexual. There's other rowing jokes. <laughs> There's a lot actually. It's very awkward. Uh, <laughs> it's its own little niche. Yeah, sure. you gotta remember it's uh, it's yet again an, an, an entire sport where everyone's wearing spandex at all times when you're mm. competing. So those those sports generally have awkward jokes. Anyways the news (laughs) yep that's a segue (laughs) Uh, speaking of awkward the rivian r1t won uh, motor trends truck of the year so i (laughs) i don't really think of it as awkward i think of it as like Um, if if you paid attention to anything that anyone at motor trends said over the last three months like yeah uh, especially because like what's their their last three have been ram think so I'll, I'll give in i'll preface what i said by crediting dan neal with the awkward <laughs> you know word to go with it but is it yeah. awkward because they spent however many weeks driving rivians across the country and then made it the truck of the year like, huge number of of uh, marketing dollars to let them play with these things for a few weeks I pay to play these days sometimes and there's yeah. way too much of that yeah i was like every other oem does similar like they had a long-term yeah. TRX with them on the trip. Like, it's not like... Oh, my God. I saw three of those over the last two days, which is... How do they uh, look on tiny Connecticut roads? <laughs> this was uh, Newport, Rhode Island, tiny, tiny, tiny Rhode Island roads. And uh, I don't think the answer is any different. It's fucking enormous. And- that truck is amazing. It is not designed for... I mean, it's totally designed for that clientele, but not that that area. Why in the north Northeast do you ever need... I'm, I'm from the East Coast. Like, Northeast, you do not need a TRX. No. Correct. No. Especially, like, these quaint little towns, and, and this thing's no. just fucking roaring down. Oh, the, yeah. yeah, it's crazy. So they're, they're amazing. They're so fun to drive on and off-road, but, yeah, yeah I, no, that's not the place need, for it. Need to find some seat time. Where, yeah. on the, where in the Northeast are you from? Uh, originally from Maryland, but I've lived okay. all over the East Coast. I, I lived in uh, Providence for a year in college. Actually. Oh, nice! So I know the area well. Yeah, but, <laughs> okay. the, but the Riv- the Rivian was a weird one. Like it it did get delivered this year. That's the one thing. Like uh, I I run all the motors content over at GearJunkie.com, and we just gave it the Adventure Truck of the Year award as well because it just snuck in because they've got a couple hundred delivered to clients already. Yeah, so, and we had one of our contributors go drive it. So it kind of fit our criteria for that award. And uh, it's pretty impressive truck. What were your other contenders for adventure vehicle? We had, we gave it a few categories. So we had like an SUV, the, uh, the new grand Cherokee uh, mm-hmm. won that the it's pretty uh, good. over. Oh, it's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was in Moab and got to rock crawl. That oh, you went the, nice. Yeah. Yeah. I went to the launch, but also had the, the L before that in mm-hmm. Vegas for SEMA, just around SEMA. I did a bunch of photo shoots and I used that as my photo rig. Um, and the L doesn't do much for me. I don't know if the portions are weird, but I do really, really love the <laughs> Overland and the Trailhawk editions of the two of the standard uh, yeah. wheelbase one. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, need, I need to find my way into the short, the two row, but the three row is a great vehicle, even if the proportions are in fact, extremely strange. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's like they grew um, the ass and left the front the same. Just... <laughs> You're talking about Grand yeah. Cherokees now, aren't you? We're talking about Grand Cherokees. Yeah. Oh, overall winner, though, I, I gave it to the uh, 4x4 for yeah. four by four, but kind of fit our overall. The 4xE, like, I mean, came out this year. It's fully available. The sales are through the roof. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and it's just a really good vehicle. Like I'm, I'm not a huge, I'm not a huge Jeep guy, honestly. Like I don't want to own one, but that's a really good truck. We in the U.S. we don't have like electrified hybrid like tax credits, do we? Like I know we have EV not tax for credits, hybrids. not no. for hybrids. So like, no. why are they flying off the shelves? Is it just because they're because jeeps know. are flying off the shelves that, like, right, right, right. Right. <laughs> because, because it's got seven are, slots. and it's not that much more it's you know what is it two twenty eight hundred bucks or something i think something like it wasn't that much reasonable. more than a than a well spec v6 um and it just gives you huge i mean i could buy that and technically have my wife commute on it she has an ev right now and she goes two miles each way like it, it gets yeah. like 20 oh, i think yeah. i got 26 miles of range it's pretty uh, good. on all ev when i drove it at the launch <laughs> That's like, Chevy Volt range and thing weighs probably fifty percent right. more, if not right. even more than that. I Looks. mean, you're still going to burn through tires and yeah. brakes and everything else, which is horrible for the environment. And oh, yeah. it's <laughs> not a smart move, and, it, and it's loud and it's uh, clunky and whatever because it's a Jeep. But you can also rip the doors off and go mud with it on the weekends if you felt like it. Yep. Anyway, I I, I like the idea of it. I I'm I I need like a hundred miles range. Like if you can get me to a hundred mile, mm-hmm. I, why it's a hybrid. You, you can drive that's, that's hundreds true. of miles, that's like true. whatever. That's it's the cue. It. it is so much better than like what a plug-in hybrid used to be. And it's a Jeep Wrangler, like yeah. a, a Ford C-Max on full EV. I think I got nine miles out of the full EV on that. Oof. And so like to have a, a Jeep Wrangler, like and a, a C-Max looks like an egg. Like it does yeah. not. Mm-hmm. look good at all but like the, the wrangler can do 30 miles or 20 26 yeah it? the key to the plug-in though is you, yeah i think they rated it 22 or 23 is their rating but i got like 26 out of it, it definitely they underrated that but it really doesn't uh break into the cargo room at all i just fit the batteries fit under the rear seat which does lose a little bit of room if you were to take the rear seats out and build it out or whatever but otherwise like really doesn't change the vehicle it's like what 200 pounds more or something yeah not much more fast. weight either it's quick yeah yeah it does the job on and off road like it's, yeah. it's totally capable a rubicon 4 by e is just i mean it's a great fun vehicle for sure we had scott talon from jeep on and he really sold us on the upcoming grand cherokee 4 by e mm-hmm. so that's, that's maybe that's something maybe to that's where to. my 30 number comes from i have i have a, I have, maybe, a, I have four by 32 e. yeah, yeah that might be the third yeah so anyways, circling back, the other finalists for Motor Trend Truck of the Year were the Ford Maverick, the GMC Hummer EV, which they're not even saying they're going to deliver <laughs> until next year, uh, Hyundai Santa Cruz, and I believe that's, yeah, those are, that's it for the finalists. So makes sense, you know? Yeah, I mean, the Rivian takes out those other two. I mean, come on. Like the Maverick's a cool truck. It's, it's a well-built truck. It's going to be a good seller. The Santa Cruz is surprisingly good, um, but I I don't know if you have you been in one yet, Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz, yeah. yeah. I haven't even seen one. Chris has. I sat, I sat in both of them. I drove them. I, I drove. I drove. Yeah, I drove the Santa Cruz. I, what did you think of it? <laughs> uh, it. I thought the interior was a little more refined than the Maverick. Um, I thought the like the materials were a little nicer, but the Maverick was much more spacious. What trim um, Maverick was it? Because that also, from my understanding, understand. creates a huge disparity. It was not a good trim. It was a it, very low trim. Uh, and well, I haven't so, been in the Maverick yet, but the Maverick, the, yeah, the low end trim is like nothing on that truck, but the high end supposed to be nice. I haven't been in that. But the but, Santa Cruz, I was really disappointed with the interior. That was the part that killed hmm, me. I was like, really? oh, this thing's awful. And the front overhang, if you go off road with it, which yeah, I did, it's, it was not okay. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's not you know like now we're starting to go now we get into the, the soft of... off-roader conversation <laughs> exactly yeah but it doesn't need that huge cleft chin I'm it does sorry. not like, it, it does not need yeah. that. so you, like but you can, yeah. is it that's gonna sell it because of the way it looks <sighs> i think that sells it sure <laughs> is part of it because of the platform that it's based off like isn't it built on yeah. a so the front overhang is basically the same front overhang as that truck they didn't give us a brand new Right. Uh, I guess I should same thing as that CUV. So this thing gives a new truck. Like mm-hmm. anyway, yeah. it's I, freaking accountants. Uh, I still think they'll sell a lot of all of those. <laughs> Every um, time Maverick, they're gonna sell a shit ton of those just because they're cheap. And the Santa Cruz, and from what I understand, the Maverick are both better than the Ridgeline. 
in my opinion. So I like, love the ridge line. Yeah, I think the ridge line looks better. Yep. Your quality yeah. is even worse than the Santa Cruz. Is it better? <laughs> I will... driving quality on road for sure. The Santa Cruz is way better on road. Off okay. road, they're pretty comparable. I think the Ridge Line might beat it, especially in the new like I forget what they call it. Their off road trail trails. sport. Trust the sport? trail sport, yeah. Trail so get, sport, which which gives you looks and tires, but no more capability. But we won't get into that. Right, <laughs> right. Now. That's, right. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> it is trail sport. Trail sport, which. On the passport, they announced this week that it is. I think the, they said they they're cutting the bottom trim passport, so the base price goes up by what, like forty five hundred bucks or something. Really? Is that just big number? That's got to be because no one's buying the base one, and they're like, where this is, it's going to look bad in the marketing, but in actuality, no no one's buying that anyway. So we can just all new car prices are through the roof. It doesn't matter. And they're all they just they're they, the low number almost doesn't matter across the board. There's mm-hmm. only a few cars where it really matters, and that it's was... like and it's only in segments where it's super comparable. So on paper, it needs to be a comparable entry point compared to the competitor directly, like full size trucks. They got to right. kind of sort of be like they'll juggle for that low number in marketing but it's not actually going to happen like that's just that, that truck be. they built two of a year and <laughs> it's like yeah the 1500s the cloth seat 1500s used to be like under 25 and now it's like oh that it's 34 995 yeah, okay. regular cab with a manual oh like, god I a, wish. a five five inch infotainment screen yeah <laughs> now it's yeah. vinyl seating vinyl flooring but yeah but, that, that reminds me, years ago, I was on a, a Ford Edge uh, press launch, and they had a, a, a door panel, and they were like, it, it was like the XLT or the, the platinum door that they had in there. And some guy was like, well, what's the base look like? And they were like, well, we only have this one, sorry. And <laughs> I asked the Ford rep later, I was like, how many base edges do you sell? And she's like, none. Like, that's why we did the nice door. Like, mm-hmm. that's the one people are going to buy. Anyway. That's just- I'm kind of surprised the Edge is still around. Like, never even think about it. I didn't know it was still around, to be honest with yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, they got, there's an ST and maybe there's a hybrid. I, I, I literally don't know. <laughs> now I need to go drive. Now I need to go drive it. I'm like, this is going on my list. Just the only edge story. Surviving on fleet sales and nothing alone. <laughs> exactly. Nothing it's a great rental car. Like, <laughs> yeah, for 300 bucks a day. Anyways. All right. Do you want to talk about uh, electric Sierras? Electric Sierra, yeah. Uh, we know nothing more except the way the front end looks, which is, Awesome. Exactly as you'd expect. Yeah, it's an illuminated <laughs> GMC Sierra. I mean, and the problem tur- is, and the turn signals goes up and down in the little lights. That's all. That's all we know. Yeah, uh, the problem. Oh, is and the little hashes on the side. The little hashes. It goes up and down like Night Rider. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of cool. The the <laughs> problem, and for the listening audience, basically, they you know just illuminated the whole grill itself, which doesn't look like it's going to have any ventilation because it's obviously electric. So it's just going to be like piece of glowing lights on the whole front end how bright are these things going to be right if they're smart that's that's the border of the frunk entry point right in in theory like they need it needs to have i mean there's not much truck sticking out of the front of the thing it needs to have a frunk so hopefully which they're going to have to that whole thing is going to have to flip down like a front tail because otherwise Mm. to put anything in there you'd have to reach up really high up and over i wonder if it's going to be like the uh tundra hoods where when you open or the forerunner hoods like when you open it the hood and the whole grill goes up like yeah it's like mm, a shell. i think that's the light that's a better solution idea. yeah because yeah. only the bollinger i think bollinger whatever you call bollinger, it has, yeah. a, has a front has a front flip down tailgate well mm-hmm. that also has the ability to then open something to the you can go all the way through yeah you, it the opens the cab the you go forever vehicle. yeah they took the avalanche rear seat and was like Let's just do that on the front vehicle. too like, yeah yeah Midgate was fucking awesome. Stand <laughs> yep. by that. Uh, so well, bollingers are cool if they ever make them and, and <laughs> Brit cut the price in half and they're, I'll buy one right now. <laughs> yeah. What? Supposedly, it's tangent, but that Ineos Grenadier or whatever. The Grenadier. Thing, Grenad- is it Grenadier? I think so. I, I'm dyslexic, so I... I, I, I don't idea, speak French, it, so... <laughs> well, it's Russian. It's a, U, it's, a U, so. it's, a UK, it's a UK company. I knew it was UK, UK yeah. Product, yeah. Well, but it's going to be made in Germany, I think. Made in Germany, and rumor has it that there's dealers that will be popping up soon. In the U.S.? In the U.S. Oh, yeah. They've already signed like eight dealers or something in the U.S., I think. Really? Last, last I, I heard. Thought, yeah. I read like four. 
I was like, uh, mm. so I, mean, I, <laughs> <up front. laughs> I, I don't have a deposit on one, but I've been tempted to do it. Honestly, like I think that thing's going to be awesome. Like well, I'm, I, everybody, I know people that have hey. touched it, and it's pretty cool. The only question is, well, I mean, to sell it here, it's going to have to go through U.S. safety standards, obviously. But for sure, how much so? <laughs> Why, you know, why wouldn't it pass safety standards? The first thing I read about it said that it was going to be low manufacturing numbers and as such, they wouldn't have to do things like airbags to the same That was degree. like three or four years ago though, right? When you read that Three or four one. years been, ago? It's been a while they've been talking about this thing. We had this um, thing called a pandemic, uh, oh Ross, and made time freeze. Yeah. It's, it's got, okay. I think well, I'm pretty positive it has airbags. They're going for full U.S., like homologation the whole nine huh. yards um i think there's going to be volume there i, I think they okay. could sell i don't know 15 20 000 of those easy in the u.s i think a year. I and they already got a truck coming too on the same chassis i had no idea that that's what they were well, yeah maybe I'm just that's what they're planning i mean it's vaporware right now like everything right like mm -hmm. like the cyber truck yeah right that's really happening dude my favorite was some instagram reel uh this week they were like they made a second one it's like it took them three years to make two like and yeah, also, they're, already, they're already talking hydrogen now too hydrogen power train on it they're they're really reaching on like the everybody. cyber truck no 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 on the uh oh. grenadier suv oh. it's, it's all about keeping the hype right you got three yeah. years of us talking nonsense about it and now it still doesn't exist yet really so they got to go oh hey the next thing because we're, we're future thinking because this is actually happening mm -hmm. i think that i think that truck will come to market i don't know us or how that how numbers but it the will happen. I think. Inside is insane. <laughs> it's so Ooh. look at the overhead switches. What? The, I haven't seen that, that photo. Crazy. It it's looks like, like an air, looks like an airplane cockpit. Yeah, those the t top looking pieces of glass on either sides of the window switches also look like they pop open like a bus. Those it's look like, like manual sunroofs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like a sailboat deck hatch. It's exactly like yeah, boop, boop, boop. yeah. Oh, they, and they stole they stole the vents off of Mercedes. They the did, air vents. and they stole they the shifter out of a road. <laughs> shifter out of a BMW what? Shifter. It's, it looks like a BMW shifter. It does. Uh, it could be. It could be a Toyota shifter too. That looks a lot oh, like the Prius shifter, which is the be. same as all the other Toyota shifters. Like <laughs> right. <laughs> Man, that thing is a trip. Huh? I'm trying to. I zoom. still want. I still want one. I'm not gonna lie. Definitely. Like I think I, I think I that, tr more that truck for under sixty grand, I would probably cool. buy it. And I don't. There's not a new car on the market right now that I think I'd throw my cash out, except maybe a TRX if I lived in the right area. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I live in the right area, and I still wouldn't buy a TRX. Yeah, it's true. They're they're a hundred grand, man. I, my friend's got one, and he lives in um, Prescott, Arizona. It's perfect. Perfect. There's desert, there's yeah. wide open roads. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. How do you? I want to know how you design a truck that looks like 85% of a Land Rover Defender and nobody calls them on they've copyright. Already, there already is some of that, but if you look at it, there's what design feature on that truck says Land Rover Defender besides our, our primordial brains going, oh, it's a cube and it has fender flares and the, the, it's a the, Defender. The kind of squared uh, off, the squared off but fenders, but not, they're not exactly the same. Like the curves... Like a Land Rover is a sharper corner where this thing's kind of curved a little bit. Everything about it gets around any copyright you can think of. It's got features off FJ Cruisers. It's got features off the Land Cruisers. It's got obviously Defender Heritage. I mean, the guy that's building it, he worked with Land Rover and tried to continue the original mm -hmm. Defender uh, for years. And Land Rover was like, no, we're not going to continue that, that product. So he has a ton of money from the uh, it's a uh, chemical industry, like oils and stuff like that. Um, and he, not oil, but like oil products and mm. other chemical stuff. Um, and that's what he's, yeah, he decided, okay, cool. I'll start my own and build it. I just realized I'm literally clicking through the gallery and I might as well share it with people. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah I think it's just something about the proportions that really mm -hmm. makes your brain think like, oh, this is a Grand Theft Auto version of a Defender. The, the hood is really awkward. The rear Hood is, is a, a, a failed attempt at a Defender. Uh, and the front bumper is awful. You, like, the first thing I do is rip that off, rip the like light, the rear tail lights and the front lights off and do something a little more flush mounted or something. 
Mm-hmm. And then I'd figure something out with the hood with a graphic or something to like yeah. change the lines because it's just a weird, awful shape. It's like if you took a a, a duck's upper bill and put it on a well, truck. There, there you go. It, <laughs> it, it, that that image shows all the vehicles that they incorporated into it. Because if you look at it, it the, like the hood is straight off a of G wagon. Yeah, yeah. Say, it looks very that yeah. G wagon, that long wheelbase, soft top G wagon. Oh, <laughs> that's yes, so good. Yeah. yeah. Dude, they've got a Series 1, they've got a Willys, they've got an FJ40. Mm-hmm. Oh. And a G. Hey, yeah, FJ40-ish. And, and, no, and no Defender in the photo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And there's so, that looks so Photoshopped, too. Oh, it is. No, it's, it's real. A, it's a, no, <laughs> come on. This was an it's event. Uh, oh, yeah, maybe. If you look at that, where the bushes meet the vehicles, it could be real. No, like it was. This was an event with people. Like <laughs> that. Oh was yeah, real. the other cars are in those shots. Yeah, they're they're in the. I'm just trying to get the one. See the G wagon sitting there next to it. Like yeah, but yeah, but the other cars aren't. So the, the that's the FJ40 back there. Yeah, then right, the G wagon, right. then this thing. It just it looked fun. They photoshopped it, or they uh, they did some interesting editing for the shadows and stuff. It just looked. Yeah, it they looks definitely so uh, touched it up. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That wasn't in the show notes, but I'm so glad we talked about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably only the third time that's come up on the show, which is kind of surprising. Yeah, it's been forever since we've talked about that thing. So I, I don't really want to talk about any of this other stuff, Ross, because I want to talk about Toyota Lexus just being like, here they are. Because it's been forever that Toyota had mm. any discussion of EV, et cetera. And then they dropped, what, 10? In a day, uh, I think it was like fourteen. Yeah, it was more than that. It was fourteen. I think fourteen's right. Yep. So yeah, they kind of just caught everybody kind of off guard and said, "Here's our Everything. portfolio for twenty thirty to twenty thirty five." Yeah, here's everything no we context. haven't been showing you at all. Yeah. No. yeah. And if we want to talk about fourteen prototypes of yeah. all battery electric EVs, like that's what they released, and it's everything from compact car to hypercar, to four by four, maybe to like Tacoma EV kind of thing. To so, this right, one that's right. so heavy that they couldn't even include a <laughs> of the wheel. I didn't notice that, but that one's real. That, that's the, that's yeah, going to be the Lexus version of the Toyota version of the Subaru. It's the RX, isn't it? Like, right. yeah, pretty much. Yeah. The, the Toyota so, X. 4BZ, blah, 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 <laughs> like horrible yeah. naming it, nomenclature yeah. like they all are. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, so it's terrible. This this one's the Highlander. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is the RAV4. <laughs> no, that's the Venza. That's oh, a Venza. Venza? Yeah. Venza. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Left yep. front's Venza. Yeah. And then and then they got the the thing that the off-road community obviously is talking about is the Tacoma, which okay, of course mm-hmm. they're coming out with Tacoma. Why is this a surprise? It does give us some insight into the design language of the next generation Tacoma, which we should which see is, relatively soon. Yeah. And it to that point, it kind of looks like they took the current Tacoma, the size, mm-hmm. proportions, and shape, uh, grafted on some of the Tundra's characteristics and yep. shrunk the back seat even more. <laughs> <laughs> which is what we knew we'd get right like i mean it's, it's exactly what we all thought we would get it's like a little bit of tundra language on the current t- tacoma because the current tacoma like people nobody complains about the looks of that truck i'll complain about everything else about it but the, the exterior looks <laughs> like it looks fun <laughs> and then yeah. and then uh, the thing that we're I all fucking love about, the right? tacoma only thing i love more than the tacoma is bashing on the tacoma <laughs> easy to bash on it it's not you don't even have to try <laughs> it's, it sucks yeah it's yeah but uh the thing everybody's talking about is the fj cruiser looking like thing that is not it's going to be a bronco sport like competitor jeep a renegade. small cuv jeep mm-hmm. renegade something like that yeah so it's like got it. it's like a four run or it's like a four runner cross with an fj cruiser cl- cross with a jeep renegade <laughs> which will sell like crazy yep. yeah yeah we'll, we'll sell that thing and it's it looks like it's small enough for them that like that's a global vehicle like they'll yeah. that's home market that's here like that's everywhere. But how well, how much range are you gonna be able to pack into that and have any storage like room in the back? So when does that come out? Because <sighs> my thought is that solid state batteries will make that thing viable and get you two mm-hmm. to three hundred mile range. But otherwise, it's a 150, 200 mile range vehicle, and they're just for around town, which is where most people use it. 
but oh, people yeah. that buy that want the like adventure experience or thought that they can mm-hmm. actually go out and adventure of course well, hopefully well, they talk with toyota too and make sure that the charging uh interface is the same as whatever chargers that toyota is putting on all these effort or not i'm saying toyota and i mean jeep jeep oh, yeah. oh jeep is putting they, the solar chargers they, they won't. won't they won't talk <laughs> no, all, uh, yeah, all the but, EV charging stuff's going to be like homologated basically in the next two years. I think needs to be. You can buy it's, 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 like yeah, it's down to like two or three really right now that are viable. I mean, there's like five or six out there, but there's only two or three that people are actually using at this point. Is your Europe has standardized USBs right for phones? Don't they all have the same charging port you, now? I think even they USB C. Right, but even iPhones. I think. I think so. I think you're yeah. right. Where okay. America, we still have iPhone and everyone else has USB C. So it's just you know, lightning or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So I just want to point out on that thing, there is no third window. It's totally solid between the C and D pillar. It's also a design concept. So it's like yeah, the these... adventure pack on the Defender, but they yeah. actually just, they just painted it and left it metal because it's tiny. These are mostly clay models that were painted, and then they put them all on a single stage. The photo we're looking at is a full render of all of them, but they look like they did have physical copies of them mm-hmm. at the presentation they did. Um, I mean, yeah. the most exciting thing there for me, the, the real thing, is the the two sports cars. I mean, they have a mid-engine looking <laughs> something, but it's yeah. a battery electric, so it's not mid-engine. MR2. I mean, S- it's, and, yeah. it's where the and battery that, packs it, so right. it makes it mid-battery. Mid, mid-motor. <laughs> and then they have a Lexus, uh, essentially LFA competitor that's like super low, low sleek, big. It's kind of, it looks like it's next to what will be a battery electric IS 500. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's about the same size in terms of length is obviously a lot lower, but yeah. um, that thing, that, no doubt is going to be fun. <laughs> I could have swore I saw a sedan version of the Lexus supercar too. And it didn't look Ooh. like the IS 500 version next to it. And I was like, that's amazing. Did it, did it look like a Lexus version of the Fisker Karma or the <laughs> Renovo Karma? We'll call it the right thing now. I was around that thing and I did not get in it. Uh. There's, there's one that still floats around my, my town and it is like chrome I think they're cool. and donks. I think they're beautiful cars. What is that convertible cool. floating around towards the back left there? I, I it's It looks like I whatever. convertible? Whatever like RCF. variation, yeah, like an RCF convertible. Interesting. That's what it looks like yeah. battery yeah. electric four seat RCF convertible. Dude, I that like, like cool. these things are like sport wagons. Like what? That's, that's amazing. That's cool. I like the, the Lexus. G, uh, the Lexus it, Tycon GTS Cross Turismo it, Turbo. They're smart. That thing will compete directly with it and cost uh, a sixty grand less, maybe. Mm-hmm. And you're getting Lex- a Porsche badge on it. Yeah, exactly. And you're getting Lexus interior yeah. and it'll be great. Like, yeah. In theory, Toyota quality, but we don't know how their EVs are going to be because they <laughs> don't exist yet. <laughs> their hybrids exactly. are, have, do pretty well and they've been around longer than anybody else. Yeah. So. Yeah. The hybrids are actually very good cars. Boring as hell, but good cars. So speaking of Le- Lexuses, Lexi, whatever, uh, I want to talk GX460 because I just spent... Uh, a bunch of hours driving mine and you've spent so what, do you want me what, do you want me to leave so you guys <laughs> welcome to the uh, lexus gx 460 podcast exactly <laughs> so i own so a toyota I, can i be kind of cool <laughs> <laughs> you've had a bunch you're 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 part of the club so i've had mine for uh seven weeks okay and i like it how long what have year? you had yours it's an 18 got it cpo oh. Right. Yep. Uh, wanted something that I could kind of start building and uh, not have any mechanical worries and just, you that's know, a, that's a lot different than mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> mine's stock at the moment and, and yours is not. So, so Correct. where do you want to go? Mine, I've, I got mine in what, 1919. No, I debuted it at SEMA 2019. So I won a top 10 like Overland Award at SEMA 2019 when I debuted nice. it. So I bought it in early, early 19. So I built it mm-hmm. in like eight, seven, eight months. Um, but it was oh, wow. built already when I bought it, um, but in not a great way. So I replaced almost everything. Uh, the rear <laughs> so... the rear bumper and the slider is the only thing left from the original build. I ripped everything oh, wow. else off. Suspension, tires, wheels, bumper, all of it. Um, <laughs> so it was what was on it my... when you got it and what's on it now? 
Uh, I don't even want to talk about what was on it when I got it. Uh, it's just not <laughs> qual- it's, I, I have a high level of quality for things that I build and own. And the rear mm-hmm. bumper, I still absolutely hate. Um, I don't even want to call out who it is, but it's a complete knockoff of a Kmar. And the Kmar is the right bumper for that truck. The one that's on there is garbage. It's the mm-hmm. lights have filled with water three times. They've kept sending uh-huh. new ones. They, which have been great. They, they've got great customer service, but the product is just not good. It's rusting. The, the powder coat's flaking off. The uh, tow hitch receiver system is not good enough for me to ever tow with. I'll, I'll carry bikes on it, but I won't even tow a trailer. It's just not Sketchy. integrated properly. Um, and yeah, the swing outs don't really work that well. And there's a bunch of stuff. So I want to replace that at some point. But, um on airbag one, so you didn't have to rip any of that out of it. So, uh, I have it ridiculously built, way over the top. But I built, I, I bought it kind of when things were getting really hot with that market or right before. And I knew, I worked with a lot of people on builds and things. And there was a bunch of people that approached me and wanted to build some parts for this rig um, because there was, a, there was not that many good bumpers out there. There was no good roof racks at the time. There was no good like uh, interior like platform system. A lot of that stuff just hadn't been made yet. Um, so I worked with a bunch of partners and I designed myself with them. Like the front bumper, my good friend and I 3D scanned it and the whole front of the truck and then worked with uh, tr- um, Trail Ready to build that bumper. So kind of between their knowledge and my knowledge and my friend's engineering skills, we came up with like by far the most streamlined, lightweight and fully functional front bumper for the GX platform. No matter what, it's going to have a cleft chin look, and this reduces that as much as possible with a full featured bumper. Um, so integrated light bars, swivel shackles, um, all aluminum body, uh, stainless steel mounts for the shackles, full access to the winch, both from the top and from the front. Um, most of them hide the winch where you can't get anything. Still full cooling for the radiator, so tons of airflow through the middle, and an integrated skid plate. Um, so it kind of combines everything. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you can option it with different light configurations. Mine's kind of decked out with all the light options. Uh, it's got an integrated light bar in the um, tubing in the top above I've the radiator. I've never seen that before. That is, it's like. It's not the first one with that, but it's the first one with like integrated lighting and the best, like it's clean. Like that's third iteration to make hmm. that's on my truck now. And it's, it's oh, wow. really good. How much does the whole thing weigh? Oh, that's Roughly. a good question. I don't remember. It's really light. Like the whole, the frame of it without the top, the top tubes are steel. The main body is aluminum. And then the mounts for the uh, winch and the shackles are stainless steel. So it's, it's not like light, light, but it's mm-hmm. lighter than any other full featured one by like 50 pounds or something. I'd have to look it up. I forget yeah. how much lighter, but. There's still not a lot of options. No, for there isn't. Front bumpers. For a lot of stuff. Yeah, I mean For the that, roof yeah. rack. There's some uh, there's some options out there, but I wanted a bigger roof rack, so I worked with a local company here in Portland and built like a full crazy custom roof rack to carry adventure gear, kayaks, that kind of thing. It's got custom rock sliders on it that a four by four shop built um, in Georgia where I bought it from. So that that part I didn't leave on there. They're welded to the frame. Oh, and they're really really nice. Who did that? Uh, I forget the guy's name. He actually. really nice i'm stoked on those and then on the interior i did a full custom everything so i've got shieldman uh touring seats in it uh and they're on a a new bracket that's no none of them had ever been done before so i worked with planted technologies to build a bracket that's appropriate for that so um those are the best upgrade in the whole truck um and then it's got a goose gear platform system in the back that's fully integrated and custom so it goes, there's a sleep platform on the passenger side that goes over the rear seat. So I just hold the seat down, throw a little platform in, and I can sleep inside the vehicle. Nice. And then it's got a drop fridge in the back as well. So a full MSA 4x4 drop fridge with a National Luna fridge in it. And then under yeah. it, I've got Icon suspension, which is crazy, like stage seven plus oh some God. bunch of tweaks. So it's really nice. Like I, I was cruising in Death Valley right after I built it at like, 65, 70 mile an hour on the really bad washboard on a speakerphone with my friend, just chilling one hand, like driving down. I just, it's so awesome. <laughs> yeah, they make nice stuff. 135 uh, pounds is what 135 trail ready front okay. bumper for GX was listed at. And the best part is the all of the product photos are, are Brian's truck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I missed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And okay. I don't think, I, I got to look again, but I don't think he updated it either. Cause I gave him really good photos. I'm, I'm an automotive photographer. That's what I do. And he used like his iPhone and he's not a good photographer. He's a great <laughs> engineer and good builder. Dude, like it's it, the right rear or the left rear quarters chopped off. It that's fine. Barely has all the front. I, I, I saw that and like the first week he put it up and I sent him a full folder with every angle, all polished, perfect photos <laughs> to update the website. So I did my part. <laughs> you tried if anybody to wants to see better photos, just look at my truck on exploringelements.com and you can find all the, all the, all the good photos. Uh, but he has, there's no post facelift 460 bumper. It's just for the 10 to 13s. Currently that, yeah, I think, I think you can make it work. I really mm -hmm. do. But yeah, it's definitely made for the, for those. That's why okay. I designed it off of my truck and the lines of the front, but the, not that much change. You cut so much off that I think you can make it work. I don't really don't yeah. think it would be that much of a problem. Interesting. Dude, okay. I eliminate... think one person's done it. Honestly, I haven't, I'd forget, but I'm pretty sure one person's yeah, done yeah. it. Because yeah. eliminate... the mounts and everything are the same. So much of that grill. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, oh yeah. Great. <laughs> it's so it... It's, I have a, I have an approach angle instead of it being like a wall. <laughs> I know I was parking this weekend. I was like, oh, I'm gonna hit a fucking parking pot like the little pylons. <laughs> yeah, that was as far yeah. off road as I went all weekend. Dude, you got great. so much flex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what you can't see is that behind where I'm standing in this picture, where I took it, is about a 20 foot cliff down to the water. So nice. that was as take close run, as it was getting. The Take the running boards off first thing. Yeah. Go ahead and do it. They're just going to mess up your body when you go anywhere. I got to chop them sooner rather than later. So yep. it's going to happen. So how many miles, like what have you done in terms of adventuring with this thing? Yeah. So I think, I think I've technically only added 55 or 60,000 miles to it. Um, I think, no, not even that much. Only like 35,000 miles. I mean, the pandemic and everything. I haven't and you got that much. Drive other but. shit. I do, yeah, I constantly have press cars in my driveway and then go on press launches like every week. So it's, it's tough to put time in on it, honestly. But um, yeah, I, I love it. So I've been to Telluride. I did uh, with, for a wedding last summer with my whole family. So that was great. Uh, we took it up and over um, Imogen, which was awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, I did that with like a cakewalk, even with a baby in the backseat, like no big deal. Um, <laughs> That's I, I amazing. Two month old, two month old baby. And going over Imogen, I was a little worried about the altitude, but she was doing really good with it. And I just had to drive real careful not to bang her neck around. She didn't have a neck, like neck control at the time. Oh, <laughs> so my, my wife like held her neck when it got rough. Yeah. Like it was that suspension and that truck. You just know how to drive well and it's no big deal. Um, but I did that. I've done that. I, uh, <laughs> I did a Death Valley right after SEMA when I launched it with uh, my buddy, Dan Greck. Uh, he was in his Jeep, his around the world African Jeep. And uh, we've had him did. on the show twice. He's, oh, nice. he's cool. great. Yep. <laughs> We love Dan. Dan's awesome. He's he's doing great stuff right now in Australia. If anybody isn't following him, the, the road shows me Dan Greck, go follow his stuff. But um, but yeah, we did an awesome, just uh fun trip for the two of us, taking photos and doing our thing. We went kind of the back way through Death Valley, one of the mm -hmm. last roads I hadn't done from through what they call them the main sand dunes back across to Saline Valley Hot Springs. There's one road that cuts through the mountains and up and over. It's very, <laughs> very rarely done. Um, and it's got like a gatekeeper on the sand dune side that's not that hard, but it's technical. You need a lifted car. I mean, I'm on 34s on, on mine with the Evo course wheels and stuff. And what, um, uh, what are they, 285, 75s? That sounds right. Okay. Like, yeah, I have to look that one up. It's been a while since I built that. I'm like <laughs> yeah. eight, eight builds in after that. <laughs> Fair. Um, but Fair. but yeah, on, exploringelements.com on the top, there's a thing that says vehicles and then it says uh, GX460 and it has all the specs and all of the stories okay. and links and photos and all videos. I'll have, all to, kinds uh, of I have to dig a little deeper. So before we get off of the 460, how bad is your gas yeah. mileage? Oh, uh, I'm lucky to get 12. Oh shit! I, I'm I'm regeared too now. Oh shit! And that helped. That helped. So I maybe well no yeah. wait. So if I convert it because of the tire size and all the stuff, I think now I'm getting like 14. Okay, that's yeah. It's horrible. That's, that tracks. It's, it's horrible. Pretty terrible. Yeah. <laughs> no, and it's, it's not fast. Even regeared, it's not fast. Like it's not no. a quick car. Big old V8, uh, premium fuel. That's the only downside to that truck, honestly. There's a lot of things that are great yeah. about it. The, the interior and the tech isn't really there at all, but it's fine. But the, the pickup and go it. and the fuel economy are horrible. Like I want a yeah. supercharger. They don't make it for that truck. Really? Yeah, well, then you'd get single digits all the time. Oh, yeah. But 
I'd have fun <laughs> doing it. I'll take a three <laughs> mile per gallon pit and have the car that I can Fair actually point. go. <laughs> Dude, I'm not, a supercharger, tower. a lot of the time, the way I drive, I don't think it would hurt the fuel economy. I really don't. Actually, yeah, a lot of the time actually supercharge them. It doesn't really yeah. like change things. Yeah. yeah, the gas mileage is fucking terrible. It's horrible. Yeah, I mean, you, it's it's a like you compare it straight up with a forerunner, right? Because it is a fifth gen forerunner under all the skin and all the whatever. Uh, it's, so it's a fifth gen forerunner with a V8, a luxury interior, and a more unique body. You like it or don't like it, style wise. Yeah, well, that's the V8 right there, or part of it. But um, but yeah, so it's but you can buy it with similar mileage same year for like I don't know 20 30 percent discount over a forerunner. So it doesn't make any sense, to, right? So that's a lot of fuel to burn. I mean, you know, I, I'd rather not burn the fuel for the environment, but like that's a lot of fuel. You'd have to burn a lot, a lot of fuel to make you know 10 yeah. grand difference or whatever. Good years of driving now. <laughs> yeah but prices True. have gone through the roof on the gx's and the forerunners so the forerunners have always oh, been God. insane but the but now gx's are nuts like so i i got in slightly under the radar before they went astronomical mm -hmm. i got a good deal i've been keeping tabs on things since i bought mine and i still paid the lowest of any of that mileage in right. year so I, i've been tempted to sell mine lately just not because i don't know what i'd, I'd buy but and, and i love it i don't want to but the value of it is so insane that oh, I'm like, yeah. it's like hard not to dude on I cars think, and bids it'd go for a huge number yeah what, what, what do you think it would go for i mean you've seen the thing it's fully uh, jacked up. 13 with one hundred and five thousand miles knowing no, how clean, much clean car fact yeah i mean probably probably 50 i i think photographed properly cleaned up i could get 60 70 out of it <laughs> that's and a that's mental. ton of money that's over 50 of, is mental right like i mean to build it though like straight up like if you run like a spreadsheet and everything that's on that truck and the truck that's a hundred plus thousand dollar build like yeah. yep. is the is the crazy part right Ugh. i mean we're never getting that back out of it i'm not trying but like <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it, it's I don't, crazy I, mean, the I, I don't have are... any plan i don't have any plan to sell it because i don't know what i would buy and it's finally right. done like i had mule expedition outfitters up here in washington dial all the electrical it's nice. awesome like everything's labeled and shrink wrapped and perfectly run there's no, never there's not going to be a fire in the in engine bay like this thing it's got tons of accessories but it's all through a switch pro system and it's all fused and accessible and serviceable and everything's traced it's awesome i love mm -hmm. it yeah the only place you can really go is land cruiser and then it's yeah 200 it's series land cruiser yeah, I'm going to pay double for the base vehicle and then I'm going to put this 100 or 60 grand into it to build it again. So why would yeah. I do like exactly. it's slightly built slightly better, but it doesn't give you much more interior room and you still have the same slow V8, but you can put a supercharger on that. One, so. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so what's the story with the truck in this picture that Chris just brought up? With the yeah, mule. so this is a photo I just photographed. That's the mule wagon from uh, Mule Expedition Outfitters. I just photographed, did a photo shoot on it for a bunch of magazines. There's a story up on Gear Junkie right now about the Ute Chop, because that's what they call that down under. Mm -hmm. um, basically, it's an 80 series Land Cruiser with the back cut off and it all sealed up with metal. And they put a Mitz alloy flatbed and canopy on it. And it's lifted, it's got an LS powertrain. Full custom interior. It's on 37s, I believe. Full bead locks, um, fully locked both both ends. Um, snorkel, roof rack, awning, <laughs> and Bluetooth. You know, all, Perfect truck. All of it. Perfect truck. It's pretty freaking awesome. Like they're just getting it tuned now. Um, they they just tuned the LS and like it's yeah, it, it's built to the nines and it's a really cool shop truck for them and the, the it's the owner's personal truck as well. So it's pretty slick. Dude, Mule, Mule always truck. has amazing shop trucks, like, right? Yeah. Wouldn't you, yeah. if you were them, though? Like, yeah. well, they oh. they started as enthusiasts and from the aerospace industry. Um, so they built their. I think their first one that, that was kind of on the scene was their before right when they started the company was a uh, van ag build with a full exo cage on it, and it was built like ridiculous custom bag systems inside, custom flip down beds like uh, with an exo cage and like skid plate. It was insane and really capable. You look at it from the outside and you're like, wow, green Van Agen with like uh, exo cage, like what? And then you look at the details and you're like, whoa, this is over the top. 
Um, this oh, yeah. thing's over the top. The, the details yeah. on this thing. <laughs> rear winch. Oh, man. The mule wagon. Yeah, they chopped the back uh, behind the rear axle. They chopped the frame rails off and put on a new clip with a custom skid plate and winch mount. So it's got and a, a front and rear winch on it. The exhaust is routed through the rear skid. Yep. That it's clean. Again, slick. aerospace yeah, and slick. tech and like proper think engineering and thinking. It's pretty, it's really slick. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God. Dual Toyo MTs mounted on, <laughs> on the thing. Oh, it's like yep. 200 pounds of wheels and tires mounted up high. Yeah. That, that's for looks in the U S nobody needs two spares yeah, in, the US. in the outback in Australia. You need two spares here. Not so much, <laughs> yep. but it looks really cool. So, and it, and it promotes that product, right? I mean, that's what they're, they just started. They're the distributor for mitts alloy uh, platform. Okay. So they just started bringing those in. So this is their mm -hmm. first like company build with that setup. So it had to be over hmm. the top. See those on the um, four wheel drive action videos a lot. Mm -hmm. I, yep. I, I think the truck I see from them the most is the, is it a Stevenson? It's Stewart like a, and Stevenson. So yeah, the, yeah. the mule oh. Stewart and Stevenson. So it's a, uh, a huge ex-military truck that they took the back and they built a full custom fold out stage. So they use it at events. So they like the Northwest Overland Rally, they come to for years and I help run that event. So I've done many a raffle and different things from that back end of that truck as a stage. Nice. It's really, really cool. I think they're, they might have sold it or they're going to. I'm not sure. But yeah, that, that thing's been around for at least four or five years now. Hmm. It's so, huge. <laughs> it's huge, huge, like massive. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The bottom of the stage is like five and a half feet tall, like when it fills oh up. <laughs> yeah. That's lightly terrifying. Then my, my Google yeah. skills are slow tonight. Sorry, guys. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. That is an enormous vehicle. Yeah, so those of you listening, it's it's a Stuart and Stevenson uh, military truck, four by four truck. I think it's on like forty ones with full central air inflation, the whole nine yards. And this one was like uh, had a flatbed or something on it from the military. They took that off and they built this crazy custom uh, metal, what looks like a radio box or on the back, and then the whole thing like flips open and creates a huge stage for events. I was trying to get it with the stage open and they were so, they were so bad pixels like yeah then ah uh, yeah i'm trying to think i'm sure there's a story from northwest overland rally that i took a photo of that has it but i can't point you in the right direction at the moment <laughs> that thing's nuts um anyway <laughs> anyway yeah so you touched the lx 600 yeah yeah at the la oh, auto man. show i got to sit in that and crawl around under it a little bit and check it out um, I mean, it looks interesting. The exterior styling is, is definitely like, I don't know. Um, the interior I, is interesting. Um, it still feels dated. It hmm. doesn't feel dated, but you look at things and you're like, yeah, this is still a dated tech. Like it's not, it's not like a modern, modern car. Yeah, here's my little interior review. I did like a one minute walkthrough of the interior. <laughs> it <laughs> works. The Ooh, the I have 500 edition. in front of it. Oh yeah, totally. Um, yeah, so like the materials are really nice and this is the F Sport. So it's got like metal and carbon and cross stitching and red leather and it, it's pretty slick. Um, but when you really get down to it and like feel it and check it out, you're like, wait a minute, like this is kind of old technology and not really updated much. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I, don't, I don't get it. Like br bring, bring, for me, bring me a, with this interior with less red and blank to it um belongs in a 200 series land cruiser that i can go actually off-road with and we're not going to get that <laughs> that's not available mm -hmm. to us so we i talked with one of the the lexus reps and i'm completely spacing on his name right now he talked about a standard trim that was basically going to be the land cruiser priced accordingly priced similar but basically right. be price eighty five thousand dollars yeah. right yeah. instead of yeah so probably 90 or whatever probably 90 yeah. i guess if you're if you're getting into it for that price and these would that would you think those materials that you were touching at the land cruiser price you said feels right it, see the materials and stuff were nice in this car in in okay. the f sport uh it, it it felt like a lexus like this was the sporty ones a little over the top but mm -hmm. um it felt like a Lexus, like the materials feel good. It feels like it's well put together. It's got good panel gaps and fitment and that kind of thing. 
Um, it just, I don't know. I look at the tech and the screens and the things like I've driven so many modern cars. I'm like, eh. like this could have come out four years ago and people would have been like, okay, cool. You made it not cool. This is awesome. And it's new and impressive. Mm-hmm. But so it, to have this being a 2022 car, you're like, ah, I don't know. Yeah, and not, I'm, a, I'm a Lexus guy. Like, I mean, I own a Lexus and my parents have a lot to like, beat a dead horse, but like the Rivian R1, yeah, the R1S, the Rivian, you know, at 75 or 80 grand is going to blow people away. And yep. I mean, the seats in this look really nice. So this feels like yeah. a Lexus Toyota product because I, I there's not right. really a new Lexus or Toyota that comes out and we're all like, finally, they jumped ahead. Like, no, they never do. It's played They're safe. always yeah. behind. <laughs> yeah. But they, they try with the exterior styling. They try with some specific tech features and they try with powertrains besides being lagging on the battery electric front. Um, but yeah, when it comes to like buttons and fitment, I mean, the, you look in this interior and these buttons are straight out of current vehicles. Like this is all parts bin stuff. Um, yeah. So it's too I, yeah, it just, yeah, it, it's fine. It all works. Um, it's just not, like, I'm not like, oh, cool. I have to be in this vehicle and it's impressive. It's like, okay, then, cool. It's got all the features. It's all there. <laughs> you, you touch it though. It works. Yeah, it <laughs> yeah. works. Yeah. It'll keep working. Uh, speaking of things that work and sometimes don't work, but hopefully usually do. How's the Porsche? <laughs> so I bought my first sports car this year um, and it's a 996 Turbo, an 01. Um, it, I've never owned a sports car before. I've owned lots of adventure vehicles and things, but um I've always wanted to have a sports car. I'm a sports car guy. I just never, I mean, I'm, I, 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 it's funny. I turned 40 and had my wife was pregnant and I bought a 996 turbo while she was pregnant. <laughs> so everybody flipped out on the internet. Oh my God, you have a kid coming and you're buying a Porsche. I'm like, yeah, I've been yeah. planning this for a year and a half. Yeah. Yes, I did. <laughs> you can fit, uh, fit, fit a car seat in the back of one. Not a rear facing car fleet. I've tried, nah, I've tried. Not, no, okay, not no, at the not, age not his kid real, is right yeah, now. No. I, I physically point. tried. It doesn't work. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it's awesome. I, I love it. This car is pretty unique. It's a one year only exterior white. So it's like a creamy white feels very nineties. Um, huh. It's not Carrera white. It's like Maserati white or something. I'm not pronouncing that right, but it's a, it's a one year only. Uh, it's the very first year of the air, uh, water cooled uh, turbo. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I'm pretty sure I gotta look this up. I think in 01, this was like the apex predator in the Porsche lineup. I don't think there was any GT cars and I don't think there was any like super hyper cars in a yeah. one because it's a transition I, between the air and uh, water cooled stuff. Don't think, I, yeah, I think you're right about that. Because 02, we got like a GT2. I think. GT2. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I wasn't till 02, I don't think. So this car is a one year only and the interior is a boxer red. So, nice. but it's not just boxer red. It's everything is boxer red. Everything. <laughs> oh, like oh, every, man, every, that's... every, every, everything. Like, like not. There's no the, black accents. Like there's are, a black headliner and there's a little, even the carpets are red. Are the oh turn signals format. red? I think so. I, like everything's red. Like the, the center console's red. The the surround of all the vents is red. The dashboard's red. The steering wheel's red. Like it's nuts. That's a um, lot. That's a lot. It's, Good thing the outside's it's, not. <laughs> well, it's not what I would have chosen, but the two colors together work really well it has a 90s vibe which i kind of like um mm. and i mean it was you know, designed in the 90s but uh it's i don't know it's a it's a unique color combo and it's not like who super gaudy or weird i don't think so i think it's actually it's actually more valuable because of that i've had tons of people like i have to own your car here's my phone number so like i'm is I'm this it, oh absolutely yeah excellent <laughs> I, I bought okay, an good. old man like to me a 20 year old analog manual transmission car like because i don't get that in press wheels. like I, I drive new cars oh, all the time and they're awesome but you know 99.9 percent of them are dual clutch whatever um paddle shifters yeah which they, is fine but not as fun i like the engagement so red yeah. <laughs> it's red yeah. Like, it's, yeah that's not even it that's, that's not that, that no that, I, that has it, silver accents Oh my god! Does not have silver. No, it's red <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> I, I think, think the steering so... column's red on mine too, not black like that photo. Really? <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's red. Oh everywhere. my god! Because I That's I so can much. find red steering columns, but I cannot you, find it without the silver accent. <laughs> you is, can't find it on the internet. I've tried. I cannot the problem find any with other nine nine six turbos with this interior. I can't like and and with this color combo, that's why it's like pretty unique. It's you have. Nuts. Like, the original window sticker. I would love to see how many of those 
pieces of red were options you know like uh, i don't but i have the original code and yes it's all this car is completely stock original it matches all the all the uh option code except this is tuned so it has an air intake and some uh turbo somethings on it from evom so it's got an evom stage two kit on it so it's about 500 uh wheel horsepower on this thing Oh, no, and no, it's no, got no. wheel spacers because this car looks really weird without spacers. I hate wheel wow. spacers, but like it, the tires are too inset. It's a wide body car. And it, the, the, the spacers I have on there are pretty mild. A lot of people go wider even. But um, I put I like, PS2 tires on it. Oh, yeah. I like it in the lineup. You can see yeah. the off whiteness to it now. Little cars and yeah. coffee surrounded by two Carrera white uh, 991s and then a 964. Yeah. I forget which. Yeah. Uh, red in the shot too but yeah yeah you can see how creamy white it is in comparatively and the, and the paint's in pretty good shape it's got like two little nicks i gotta get fixed up and it's got some aging clear bra on the front of it uh it's like um sun bleached uv damage like clear bra but it kind of, <laughs> oh that's great. what that line was okay <laughs> yeah, but it's in great shape and it like kind of looks the part it's kind of weird i'm tempted to change it out but i'm like eh, it doesn't look that bad and it's kind of i don't know part of the car period it's correct in, Kinda, yeah, I kind of like it. Yeah. Like the rear, also, wing, also the rear wing failed, uh, and I put in the uh, electric actuator ones, uh, which are way uh, better. Like nice. they're cheaper than the than the factory ones, and they're never gonna fail. The factory mm -hmm. ones are just gonna fail again in like two years. So I put. So, um, dude, it is not often we get to sit, I get to sit here and click through Porsche photos. I'm loving this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, it's very interesting now because like we've spent so much time looking at the 991s and those openings on the front end have gotten enormous <laughs> like yep and yeah, this so one's got like that stubby like shark nose look like that fish look yeah. to it yeah, yeah. I, so I, there there was a gt3 in l1 i'm told by wikipedia thank you wikipedia oh one there was a gt3 that's what it says a, a 996 gt3 996.1 gt3 1999 to 2001 it says I could, it could, you know, it could have been like a half year thing. It could so, so they claim it stopped because 99 was the first year of the 996. 2001 yeah. is the first year of the turbo. So the GT3 came out the first year of the 996. That doesn't make any sense. Let's I find... haven't looked it up, so oh. but that doesn't add up. <laughs> Nor normally, uh, you get GT3 your face cards and then it goes. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not a Porsche bro. I'm I'm literally reading off Wikipedia. GT3 <laughs> nameplate was introduced in 1999 as part of the first generation of the Porsche 996 model range, as a homologation model of the cars entered in the FIA GT3 Cup. Okay. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Uh, Metzger engine. Once blah, 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 we start getting the FIA, oh, that was a non-turbo Metzger engine in that thing. I think right. Because the GT3 had no turbos back then, right? The GT2 yeah. had the turbos. Yeah. Well, so it's a, it's a it's the Metzger motor without the IMS issue, like mine, but without the turbo. Oh, did it's... you have an IMS issue? No, no, no. I have a turbo. It has the Metzger motor. You can't have oh. IMS. There is no IMS. Only the standard. Uh, <laughs> there's me hooning that's the amazing. car <laughs> on the beach. So the other, the other mod I did is I put a roof rack on it. And it, that's a surf kayak in a surfboard bag and a set of Max tracks on my roof rack, my Yakima that's roof rack. And those are, those you are PS2 down? tires. No, full pressure. <laughs> you can see my GX in the background just in case. But oh, just uh, in case. <laughs> I brought a set of I never needed it, Max tracks or a toe strap. I mean, I brought stuff, but like no man, I, I had my niece in the car. Uh she was out visiting from the East Coast. And so funny. yeah, my dad's filming this actually. This is the first time I ever did donuts around somebody, and it was my dad That's in the middle with my so phone. Funny. Dude, that, is that beach has uh, got some good composition. It, it's, there. No, it's all wheel drive, but um you it's give it enough. Like well, I turned the traction control off. <laughs> you have to, because otherwise it's too smart. Um, and then you just overpower the all-wheel drive system in sand. It's not hard to like keep everything spinning. So all four tires are spinning. The back ones are just spinning way faster. Oh, it was, hey, everything's sliding. <laughs> yeah, it was so fun and so controllable, like mental controllable. Like I was having way too much fun. It was like just easy. I was just flicking it everywhere. This was all uh, uh, second gear. I think I had second gear just like just below the rev limiter and just i mean i'm like 400 plus horsepower on top basically spinning tires like it was so fun you you left so much distance between the gx and yourself just in case <laughs> uh, 
What could possibly go wrong? Trying to be safe. My my daughter, my six month old was there, like I think breastfeeding with my wife over on the GX. So I was like, <laughs> keep, keep some distance from that while I have fun in my car. Uh, that's funny. So what else is in your garage? Your fleet. Uh, so the only other vehicle in my garage is a um, 2006 KTM 950 Adventure. Mm-hmm. So last year of the carbureted adventure bikes. So. So fully carbureted, and that thing's tuned to the nines with all the all the the emissions bleep and aftermarket pipes and it the Rottweiler kit and the, it's that thing's mm-hmm. I bought it with most of that stuff, but I've had it tuned and suspension dialed and everything else. It's ready to rip now. I need to go out on another big mission. The other mission I did a big mission in Idaho with that uh, during the pandemic, but um, that's really the only trip I've done with that recently. I did I bought it and two weeks later did the uh, from Mar- I bought it in Maryland. Uh, and I drove it two weeks later. I took off on a 23 day, 24 day, uh, 5,000 mile trip solo Jesus. through the Maritimes in September. So I went Maryland wow. up through the Canadian Maritimes, did the trans lab and then part of the trans Canada trail into Quebec. Uh, and then I did the Mount Washington, um, hill climb road mm-hmm. and, and went to Vermont for the Vermont that, Overland too. trophy yeah. on my way back. Or not trophy the the rally runner the rally yeah, yeah. I'm trying I've done to get both to that a bunch of times too. Uh, Are they doing that's it again? A freaking trip! I don't know. The, I hope yeah, so. That, the venues changed ownership hands, and I don't know what's going on with that. I've heard some funny things recently. I'm not positive, yeah. but it hasn't happened for a while, and I don't know. I don't know. I don't know there if they're going to revive it or not. Another one that popped up. Yeah, on the there's down low. tons of them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Wow, that's a freaking trip. But yeah, I was. I did only like one highway on that whole trip and i did over three thousand miles off pavement out of five thousand nice. miles on that trip you so carry was, tubes with you spare tubes that's a and 640 adventure in the photo that you're showing oh. now. That's the bike i had before the 950 <laughs> <That's>, uh, <laughs> i got to have my ktm i figured i had it <laughs> <laughs> that that ktm 640 adventure i had just before my 950 and the 640 is awesome off-road and looks way better i mean that thing's a like rally machine but on the pavement, one hour only. It had aftermarket seat and suspension and everything, and oh. only one hour I could handle. It's non-balanced single cylinder, so you just it just vibrates the crap out of you. I have a bad back, and that thing is mm. not not part of the program. Off road all day long, you're good, but on pavement, oh, so bad. Yeah. Okay, I got um, nine fifty this time. I got to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's part of my that. Idaho trip. I was near Crater. Uh, crater no something of the moon crater uh, uh craters of idaho the national monument that one yeah <laughs> Here's the moon. yeah reading it was reading your hashtag. oh yeah there you go <laughs> I, t- I, t- I geotagged it there you go craters of the moon national monument it was right next to it was outside of the park but there's a two track that kind of goes along it on blm land and my mm-hmm. uh, my buddy mario donovan from at overland he was on the other bike and the two of us were just rallying like crossing paths and just like two track next to each other through this like crazy That's rock awesome. terrain it was <laughs> sketchy as hell because if we go off the trail off the two track at all it was like jagged lava rocks mostly but oh, that um, good. yeah it would have been awful but we we were having so much fun like it was i don't even know it was like 40 or 50 miles of that like just oh, crushing wow. and we were just we were pinned so we had like three trucks behind us and they, like a 200 series, a Tacoma and a mm. LR3, all built. Um, and they, I mean, there's no way, like we we pulled over here and waited for like 25 minutes before they showed up. Like, oh, yeah. so much yeah, fun. Yeah. You can carry so much speed <laughs> yeah. that trucks just can't. Yeah. And they were ripping too, but these things, man, they, we were having fun. <laughs> it was good. What kind of, um, well, I guess if you had trucks with you, you didn't have to carry that much, but on, on the long trip, what kind of recovery gear and such you you bring like tubes and everything with you and yeah on this trip we uh we were gonna go on our own that was the plan just mario and i and then we had a couple friends that decided they wanted to come and they don't ride bikes and we're like okay so they sherpa all our gear and all our beers which was great (laughs) and cocktail we mario is amazing cocktail maker so we had a full-on quiver of um yeah there's one of our campsites in the tacoma that came with uh we had a bunch of tequila which was good and bad (laughs) 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 um that campsite was at like 8,000 feet or something too. It was really cool. Uh, outside of Sun Valley, Idaho. It's pretty neat. Um, but yeah, in terms, I always carry Moscow Moto. I got one of their Nomad tank bags and I have their uh, backcountry bags, um, side panniers and a top bag. Um, on this trip, I just used the KTM top case because I, I wanted a hard case to protect my camera gear. 
because everybody else was sure putting everything else. So I brought a photographer. So I shot uh, a bunch of stuff and snacks and some tools. So I carry a small compressor, a tool, a Moscow Moto tool roll with a Moto specific tools, um, a small air compressor, some, uh, uh, what do you call it? Tire repair uh, plugs, some tire, nice. a tire plug, plug kit. Um, I do carry a tube in the, I have a tubeless setup on the bike but I have a tube that I carry under the seat in the, on the bike um, and some extra fuses. And I carry an extra um, fu uh, fuel, oh man, what is it? The fuel pump, sorry, fuel pump. So oh, on the, wow. middle of the, the middle of the trans lab, it's a known issue on this thing. It's down low right behind the skid plate in the front of the motor is the fuel pump. And the, it has dual tanks because it's a rally bike. So it has tanks on both sides. And the fuel pump fails because the connectors get sand and grit and water in them and corrode and go sideways. Yes. It's just this shitty like a, a bronze sign. loop with two little connectors. Um, and it's horrible. <laughs> um, so that fails. It's just a known thing. So uh, in the middle of the trans lab, that failed on me and I couldn't get the bike running. So at 20, 20 or 30 miles of the trans lab, I was in the back of some construction worker's truck that they, they luckily showed up. They wouldn't leave me. I was like, ah, I'll figure it out. Cause they showed up right when I pulled off to the side of the road and uh, they wouldn't leave me out there. Like, dude, no, like you're in the middle of nowhere. Like we're taking yeah. you to the town. And it was just like to the hydroelectric project. And I, it was snow. So I, I rebuilt the, that fuel pump um, in the parking lot, in the snow of like the, hotel, restaurant, convenience Jesus. store, school, uh, general store combo that was the town. Uh, oh my but, God. Where was but this? I had, <laughs> on the Trans-Labrador Highway up in okay. Labrador in Canada. Yeah. I don't remember the name of that town. There's just like five towns along that road that, or whatever. That and they're sounds, all hydroelectric projects. That sounds yeah. very Canadian of them to be like, no, sorry. we're not leaving you here. Like, yeah. Yeah. They I, also I, know I what's out there at night in the cold. So yeah, yeah, it was yeah. I mean, it was snowing. There's a storm front moving in. I I was fine until the bike just decided not to work. <laughs> like I pulled, I coasted off the side of the road. I'm like, what the? And it wouldn't fire back up. So fuel pump died. But yeah, so I I, I carry a new another. I rebuilt uh, and have like there's an upgrade you can do to fix that, and it's a solid state connector. It's like an aftermarket mm -hmm. part. So I had my my engineering friend like solder that part on a brand new fuel pump, and I rebuilt the old one, and I carry the old one with me on big trips like that. Just in case. smart, <laughs> smart. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's good to go. So it, it's the normal KTM stuff. Like that's a normal thing with the KTMs. But mm. otherwise, <laughs> it's been good to me. Like I mean, it eats through chains, and it's like ninety plus horsepower stock. So it's it's a lot. It's a big bike, but it's powerful. It's healthy. Yeah. It so that's like it's... that experience breaking down in the middle of nowhere mm -hmm. sounds like the antithesis of the Land Rover Trek. <laughs> yeah yeah but yeah that that trip was like 24 <laughs> days of rain or 23 of my 24 days of pouring rain and cold and snow and i was just like i got sick in the middle of it and broke down and had uh -huh. another breakdown with chain issues and everything else and then there's the trek competition so the trek competition is a one day scavenger hunt like competition that i did with jeff was on my team mm -hmm. and um we did it uh on the Biltmore estate like amongst the vineyards and the skeet shooting and the uh, uh -huh. amazing amazing <laughs> property that is the Biltmore estate in Nashville North Carolina in brand new like five mile uh Land Rover Defender 110s with the four-cylinder engines um all built to the nines by Lucky at Offroad and a bunch of other people that built them up uh yeah, so one day competition, and we won it. We won the media wave. <laughs> I, <laughs> it's mo it's mostly for retailers, but um, <laughs> right, it's mostly seventy dealers. retail yeah. teams. Yeah, seventy dealer teams this year, uh, and the biggest ever. And we were the first wave, like before them, and we had I think seven teams or six teams. But we and beat Jeff. I, will yeah. be so happy to tell you that you guys beat Lindsey Vaughn. <laughs> we <laughs> we did beat an Olympian. Yes, we were happy that. Land Rover brought in one of their ambassadors, Lindsay Vaughn, and stacked her team with an amazing all-female team that was like amazing athletes, super smart, um, no, mountaineers and extreme sport athletes and had done rally navigation and everything else. And yeah, we, we beat them handily like, uh, <laughs> by, by a lot. Uh, and everybody else by even more, quite honestly. Like, their team was the closest to us and then like third place was way behind that. Mm. Um, 
but yeah, we, I don't, we, we sort of lucked out, but we, I don't think so. I think we just worked together really well as a team. And between the three of us, we had the skill sets that they wanted, they needed for the competition. So we worked really good as a team. I mean, we were thrown together. Uh, I hadn't met Jeff before that. I think we met at one oh, event, wow. but I didn't really know him. Um, and then Tommy Micah from TFL was on our team as well. And I met him along the way, but we weren't like close friends or anything. So it was awesome just to hop in and the three of us like got along really well and made it happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's Tommy and I running <laughs> off the start line. Yeah. yeah. We beat everybody That's we funny. beat everybody down the hill. <laughs> That's so funny. The you got a camera in hand. Oh man. Yeah, we, I mean that was the stupid part. We didn't know what the program was there, but we had to have our gear. So we I had 30, 40 pounds of camera gear on my back and my big camera in my hand. Did your so your funny. camera backpack's actually pretty big? Like that's, that's a standard not- peak design bag, uh, yeah. day, the day pack. Uh, I can carry two, two bodies and three lenses and a water bottle and a, and a jacket. And that's kind of the normal and some like cleaning supplies and filters. That's kind of the normal package. I carry that around for pretty much everything. I love that they put you guys in like pennies. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> is anybody yeah. else mm-hmm. who's going to be at the event? No guys, the kids. <laughs> well it, it denoted the teams and like made it a team because they all of them had numbers on them so like mm. you couldn't swap teams mid thing or whatever i don't know it made it kind of team oriented we had to give those back we didn't get to keep those <laughs> are they doing that next year <laughs> they say uh, i don't i don't know they I'm haven't saying. announced that they are they tend to do it i mean this is only like the fifth or sixth time they've ever done it um and they skipped a year because of the pandemic but i don't I don't think they're going to do it every year. I think it'll be every other or something like that. They usually do it when there's a new vehicle to launch or um, every couple of years when they need to like reinvigorate their dealership in terms of um, skills and lifestyle of the brand. I mean, the whole mm-hmm. idea is to ingrain that this is what Land Rover is all about, not always just the super luxury clients. Like, hey, we can use these vehicles. This is what they're for. Um and kind of get make sure that there's at least a couple people at every dealership that have that knowledge and skill set and, and kind of t- can talk about that. Right. Especially if they're selling something like the Defender. Yeah. You know? yeah I mean, the Which opposite I- of that, right, is like an hour and a half ago or whatever, two hours ago now, the, the embargo was up on the Land Rover SV. So, or the Range Rover SV, the brand new. So the opposite of the Defender. Yeah. <laughs> so that is yeah. the ultra, 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 ultra luxury. I was in LA at the launch of that as well. And uh, holy crap, that thing's beautiful inside and out. Unbelievably nice. Um, the, the the bespoke, like custom stuff. They say it's 1.6 million configurations you can do. That's, and that's crazy. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like unlimited paint to sample, basically. And, like, yeah, and that's how they get fun- to- yeah well it is basically they're it's taking like in every and color in existence they're like yeah that's all an option so mm-hmm. well you have like seven wheel options and then the main 23 inch sv wheel that's really unique and pretty cool like it has accent pieces that can attach to it and there's like three or four color accents that you can add to the wheel that comes in two or three colors and then there's seven wheel options so like it adds up pretty quick as to how you can actually customize it. 40 some yeah options. i'm looking <laughs> looking through the release right now it's yeah absolutely wild yeah i just finished a story on it and like i said i got to crawl around it there's a there's a walkthrough interior video on my on my website from la Auto <laughs> or on instagram from uh, the la auto show as well and uh yeah it's unbelievable it's really cool i mean hand laid wood mosaic veneer inside and the ceramic touch points are amazing like that i like hmm. I'm into, like, I would do that on, on my Porsche or something else. Like I, I couldn't cause the cost to come up to tooling, but right. <laughs> uh, like the gear shifter and like the climate control knobs and the control knobs on the seats for the armrest, they're just like the old uh, LR product or uh, like LR3, LR4 product um, for the adjustment of the armrest. They're all made of ceramic, white or black ceramic. And they feel like ceramic, like they're awesome. Like mm. they're, they're hard and they're kind of cold and it just it's really neat feels, touch that you don't see in any other vehicle yeah it feels like luxury it's totally just premium. like yeah. yeah it's always nice when you get in something and the things that look like metal are metal and they feel like metal and they're heavy so i can definitely see that you know they're doing, like especially with the defender and now seeing you know this like they're really starting to carve out a bit of uniqueness in everything Whereas mm. it just got stale a little bit over yeah. time. There was a, there was a little bit in the middle there that it was kind of stale, but I mean, Land Rover's always had its own thing. Like I love Land Rover for what Land Rover is, right? Like the, mm-hmm. the style and the feel of them is really, really cool. Um, their Range Rover products have gone over the top luxury and a lot of the Land Rover ones have too. And hardcore off-road people that 
enjoy that type of thing, like myself, eh, it's kind of hard to choke on, especially at the price point. Like I, I don't make enough as an automotive journalist to be buying a, a $80,000 Defender, modify it with $30,000 worth of stuff, and then go actually use it off-road. Like that's not in my budget. Pay for the um, fixes after you right, get the yeah, shit out of it. Yeah. Not, a, not an option. I mean, I can buy a, you know, $30,000, uh, Lexus and barely, and then modify it with the help of some friends and industry partners. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, all, but, the, but yeah, the Range Rover stuff, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I don't know, but I'm hoping that they kind of go downscale a little bit with the Land Rover products and keep going upscale with the Range Rover products. I don't know if that's the case, but the Range Rover stuff has gotten absurdly upscale. Like, I mean, we're talking like that new Range Rover SV, especially the long wheelbase four seat option, that is a uh, Maybach Cullinan um, competitor for sure. I think it's going to come in for yeah. less money too. Not by all, but they haven't announced the pricing yet. We're like a month out on the pricing, I think, but um, yeah. Difference between 220 and 320. Not really going to be make or to break it for anybody who's paying for that. <laughs> probably probably yeah yeah prices of a car i mean what's what average price of a any commercial like a consumer vehicle right now i think it's what up to 36 or 38 grand no i, I the thought average it was low sale 40s price last year it was like 41 i thought no but i thought purchase like uh average of new cars sold i thought it was like at thirty six thousand dollars was I the average think price it's because there's a higher. bazillion cars, like rental and other fleet cars and everything, in that like twenty-two to twenty-eight thousand dollar price point that are sold. Uh, there's not many options in that price range, but there's a lot of those models sold. Kelly Blue Book, thanks to Google's very <laughs> quick response, says Americans paid an average of forty-six thousand and thirty-six dollars for a new car in October of this year, which was fifty-two hundred dollars more than the prior. So that's so, what they paid. That's not the average of. You said no. 42? 46. 46. 46. So it was 41 last paid. year, is what they're saying. Yeah. Wow. All right. I mean, either way, I thought 37 was high, 36 was high. So. 37 is <laughs> right. Yeah. Time. Like <laughs> yeah. the fact that it's in the low 40s to the mid 40s now. Like, I mean, you just look at average like income of Americans. Like, how, how do people afford average car price being 47? 84 000. month loan and uh, huge and then, payments. And then, like, 20, 30% of the population, like, not working. Like, how, yeah. on by choice. <laughs> like, how does, how does I, this add up? I feel like he's watched or listened to our show quite a bit because that's, that's my thing. All, <laughs> like, how do people buy this shit? Like, I uh, mean, I, it's my fault. I have extra kids in the house. We have to feed, but like, and, but like still like i wouldn't go spend that money on i'm I'm stretching myself then buying 20 year old cars like (laughs) at a good deal after researching for a year and a half and now like that's the thing though like both my cars i could sell and make money right now like and my bike i could probably make money on you like i bought the right things because i knew that they i bought them at a decent price when the market was okay on them near the bottom of the depreciation curve and did the right things to make them more valuable and then me, I haven't sold them yet. So I haven't sold the right time because <laughs> uh, my Porsche, I'm tempted to sell. Like, I think right now it's $14,000 more than when I bought it eight months ago. Oh, value. that sounds about right. At, That's... Yeah, at a minimum, at a minimum, I think it's yeah. probably I could get more out of it. I could do, I could put $1,200 in touch up and a couple things to make it like perfect in terms of paint and looks and wheels and that kind of like, there's one little nick of yeah. clear coat on my wheel. I think Fix all that. a trailer, sweetheart percent go take real photos like do full lighting do it do the crazy nonsense bring a trailer photos that <laughs> don't mean anything and Dude, that yeah good photos I, matter like they yeah they do but for me like for me as a buyer i go on there and the ones that are that artificially photographed like you can tell they've been touched up and glossed yeah, yeah. and cr- like i know editing that's what i do as a photographer. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah i'm like okay that's the You're actual car but you like, can go too far. You're correct. I yeah. want that photo on my wall. Like that's right. cool, but that's not the car I'm buying. Like it's yeah. never going to look like that in real life sitting in the driveway. <laughs> oh, that's freaking so. funny. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. 
That's I get true. it. Take a couple of flashy photos to get people's attention, but then like give honest photos. Like, hey, mm-hmm. here's natural sunlight, and here's the photo of the Nick or the <laughs> like whatever. Yeah. You know, the leather interior. You're like, yeah, you didn't like soften the crunchy part of the leather or whatever. Right. Oh like, my you're, god, <laughs> you're describing a cars and bids photo shoot versus a bring a trailer photo shoot. <laughs> oh, <there you're> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. It That's matters. Cool. So yeah, I've thought about it. I mean, bring a trailer or something would be the place to put that car because it's so unique that you got to get it out mm-hmm. to a broader audience that has real cash and is like, or, we will pay a premium on a unique yeah, combo. A place where people know that they can go get Porsches at already. Right. Well, bring it's either trailer, there so. or P car market. Yeah, exactly. P-car. Yeah. 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 It, it's similar. Uh, I think I think bring a trailer is slightly cheaper to, as, a, as a buyer and a seller, actually. Which is P car. Yeah. I got to look that up. I, mo- Monday, there will be a large uh story about online car auctions and the benefits and pros and cons of like six of the major ones on the site that i run as the editor-in-chief autowise.com okay so cool there'll be a, there'll be a cool story on uh car auction sites and kind of the cost to sellers and and uh buyers on it but that's sweet for that, was, for that that was leading me to my next question of like what what do you want to plug <laughs> <laughs> man what do i want to plug let's see exploringelements.com is my website it's not uh it's fully functional but it's kind of dated at the moment because i haven't for the last two years i've been a little busy working for everybody else and trying to make a living and pay for my house and my portion my lexus and my kids <laughs> but, um but i freelance for a number of different people but my day job these days is uh the editor-in-chief of autowise.com and the motors editor at gearjunkie.com um, so those are my main everyday jobs. And then I'm also the feature editor at Tread Magazine, the off-road lifestyle mag. Uh, I'm the only person to be in every single issue of that magazine. They've gone through three main editors and uh, I've got features in every one. And I've had, well, I don't know, I think close to half the covers. <laughs> but, um, so I, I do a lot of features in there. And then I write a lot for Diesel World Magazine. I do a big photo shoot after SEMA every year and uh, do feature vehicle shoots for and stories writing for diesel world. Um, and then, yeah, I freelance for a bunch of people in the industry as a, a marketing consultant, social media manager, um, photographer. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Just, you know, everything. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit of everything. All over. <laughs> Photography is my passion. That's what I want to do. I'm trying to get away from the social media management and, that, and, and all the writing. I'm good at writing, but I take too long to make real money at it. Uh, I'm a very good photographer at this point in terms of automotive stuff, especially and action. Action is my thing. So I love getting vehicles moving um, or even off-road vehicles, which is tough. You got to use water or dust or mud or something yes. to make it look mm-hmm. interesting. It, moving uh, just blurred wheels on a straight road. I, I take that shot, but like mm-hmm. usually doesn't work out that well for an off-road vehicle in terms of like uh, great imagery. Yeah. But um I come from an action sport background. I love whitewater kayaking, skiing, mountain biking, that kind of stuff. And that's what got me into vehicles was having a vehicle that I could get my gear around and go out <laughs> to these remote places and do these things, um, especially whitewater kayaking. So living in a four by four van is, I, I lived on the road for about eight years full time up until about oh, three years ago. Yeah. So I bought a four by four van, lived in that for like four years and then built a full custom expedition camper on a Dodge chassis, like full I built the box, uh, like full pop top, everything. Lived in that for about four years. That's and I met my wife and slowed down a little bit and been living <laughs> in a couple of various places since then. But, uh, you know, we did it. We, I mean, we, we've done a bunch of travels together too, though. I mean, we even did an overland trip, like a fly and by to South America. So we did Chile, Argentina over like two and a half months. We bought a forerunner down there, uh, had it for two weeks in the engine seas. So oh, yeah. nice. a- a- awesome Toyota reliability that cost me like, <laughs> $8,500 $8, more than I wanted to spend on that trip. Oh. But, um, but we had a good time. It was, it was worth it. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's just about getting out there. I mean, I just, I love the photography and the action stuff and shooting action sports, especially outdoor stuff is where I come from. So shooting stuff moving is what I, I just love it. Like athletes, mm-hmm. whitewater guys, Ski, ski photography I got into for a little while and I still love it, but it's its own little niche. It's really hard to get good, 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 good photos in uh, wintery conditions and in the snow, but it's a really fun challenge that I enjoy. Um, and sometimes it's like that with cars. I mean, I shoot a lot of cars on dry lake beds, stuff like that. Yeah, you're still showing a shot from the Santa, the Santa Cruz Paddle Fest. I'm the official photographer for that event. I've been going for like 11 years and uh, it sups uh, wave skis and surf kayaks. I'm a surf kayak competitor, so I usually... The last couple of times I've gotten a podium in one of the classes for surf kayaking, which is fun. <laughs> Qualify for the U.S. team a couple of times. Um, but yeah, this is a shot of Zane 
uh, Zaniac, they call him. He's from the uh, Maui, I believe. And he's a badass big wave surfer, foil surfer, uh, sub stand up guy. But here's him doing like a, a pop shove it type thing on a wave at the steamer lane in Santa Cruz on a sub board. It's yeah. great. This is like uncharted territory for my brain here. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't have a clue what's happening in that. Area. No, it was awesome. <laughs> but that. That, that, he's he's insane i i mean i can't do what he i mean i'm not a sup paddler per se i've taught sup paddling a little bit but sur surfing big waves like that on a stand-up paddleboard is uh those guys have skills yeah i was just picking cool photography <laughs> <That's>, uh, <laughs> yeah. well you, you'll see more of zane the guy that was just doing that on the sup because he is the official ambassador for the fister ocean oh really he was at the LA Auto Show with a custom surfboard, taking photos and talking up the Fisker Ocean because he is all about uh, like saving the oceans and pulling fish yeah. netting out of the oceans and all that kind of thing, which is part of the Fisker's plan with their interior materials and stuff. Mm -hmm. So he's like an official paid ambassador for Fisker. Wow, that's I wonder symmetry. I wonder if they're hooked up with the guys who are, uh, uh, God, what is it, Ocean Cleanup? Um. There's a bunch of those. I don't know. He, I know I mean, Zane actually runs one and he works for some other one. There's, there's one that they're based out of Rotterdam, but like they're, they literally mm. have these systems out in the Pacific ocean, like dredging oh, yeah. out plastic. God, what is it called? Yeah. Um, yeah it's like, it, yeah, I forget the name of the company, but it's basically it's, like, it's uh, literally the of, ocean cleanup. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, there, that's perfect. <laughs> so yeah, they've got, they've yeah. got two systems out in the Pacific right now, dredging out microplastics and things like that and then they were like they they identified like a thousand rivers in the world and were like this is 80 percent of the plastic pollution in our ocean comes from these thousand rivers so they were like now we're going to convert it at the mouth of the river yes so they have uh i forget that they they call them like system one is the ones that's out yeah. in the pacific and then they have these interceptors at the mouth of all of these rivers and they're you can google it like there are some they great videos those already? They have like four of them in the installed. Okay. Not not all thousand, but they've I'm got. Like, wow. Oh, yeah, but they're that would have been quick. They're solar powered. They're um. Yeah. They're not autonomous, but like, it's it's literally a conveyor belt that's pulling stuff off the surface of the river. It, but it's like, but it is it is autonomous. So cool. Yeah, they didn't I, leave it there. Well, I mean, they, they leave it, it, and but... then when uh, the bins get full, somebody's got to come out, yeah. empty the bins, put yeah. new bins in, and but like. So but the process is autonomous. Yeah. Otherwise. So yeah. like, yeah, it's just a conveyor belt that's dredging stuff out of the river constantly. That's so cool. Yeah. 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 I, they've made a bunch of YouTube videos. You can lose hours and, and at the end of it, you kind of feel better. <laughs> then they have succeeded. Yeah. yeah. Until the uh, start. Hopefully comes they do some real good because yeah. that's, that's a mess right now. That's a serious problem. Yeah, that's a good problem. Uh, some interior materials in a, in a battery electric EV are, is not going to help that situation. It's not going to put a dent in that situation. No, that's <laughs> not even a band aid. Whoa, 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 1%. Yeah. 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 That's not solving things. That's mildly mitigating the byproduct of things uh, you're not even you're not even scratching the surface it, it's, yeah, it's, it's it's good marketing and why not it's better yeah. than not right yeah like that's, yeah. The, that's the reality of it it's better than making new plastics to do it if you can do it right exactly. there's plenty of plastic in the world let's mm -hmm. use what we got if it's efficient to do so because that's the other problem is making too many hydrocarbon producing or uh, refining the busted plastic to reuse it versus mm -hmm. building new because right now that line is like depends on how it's done sometimes just better for the world to make new plastic than it is to refine the old yeah. stuff. it's like my my local municipality does not accept plastic they'll do cardboard they'll do aluminum they don't want yeah. it because because of what he just said it's, like it's, it's expensive to process yes yeah you're That's better off throwing it in the trash so crazy. anyway uh i'm gonna wrap it up real fast so you can rate and review the show wherever you listen to the show do me a favor review it there i normally say itunes but like we need we need other i know that we're on all of the platforms i see that people are listening on all of the platforms review us there help us out uh Please. you can like and subscribe on youtube still uh it's hilarious if you do i love it thank you um you can follow brian uh at explore elements on instagram the e of explore and the first e of elements is the same e so don't do explore with elements with two e's if if you look up exploring elements it comes up now on instagram but yeah there's there's only one e in the middle because of the length restrictions on instagram of right. the word and or under my name brian door but it's spelled weird b-r-y-o-n-d-o-r-r -R. so both are spelled weird if you spell it completely wrong the worst way possible you can think of 
you probably got it right. <laughs> yeah, that'll make uh, sense. <laughs> uh, everything's can, made up and the points don't matter. Exactly. <laughs> you can follow Hooniverse, the Hooniverse on Twitter, the real Hooniverse on Instagram. Uh, you can read what, read what we write on Hooniverse, UTV driver, ATV writer, and everyday driver again. I only write on Hooniverse. <laughs> uh, Hooniverse is the only one that I haven't really been writing on, in all fairness. <laughs> I, I actually did write something. Uh, I didn't talk yeah. about it earlier, but uh, I, I kind of, I guess I hadn't written about the Suburban at all. The fact that we bought a new Suburban. And so I started to write about our long trip and then I kind of went back through the summer and chronicled where we've been with it. And anyway, so uh, that's up on Hooniverse right now. You can, I, th- I think I called it the dad bourbon. Dad bourbon. Which, you know, the best part about that, no one has actually used that hashtag before because I searched the hashtag on Google and the only thing that came up were my two Instagram posts. That's, <laughs> it's yours. Yeah. I, it's, not the, it's not the overused family truckster. Yeah. Or so I had a 94 Land Cruiser, which it was my uncle's previously. He's a big boat guy. So he always referred to it as his land yacht. And so that's like it had since I was a kid, I can remember the personalized plate. So when I got it, I just transferred it to my state and did the same thing. That hashtag is not only Land Cruisers. Like it is <laughs> nope. everything. So dad bourbon's mine. I claimed it. My posts were up first. The rest of you, anybody try to steal it, you suck. Uh <laughs> follow ross at no not like the one from friends so if his exploring elements was character limited how do you get away with that how long ago did you make they've changed it and that's the problem so yeah because i i I now own exploring elements fully out as well but i I secured it because i was worried about that but i started this uh instagram account i think in 2012 okay 2013 right in there (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I, I want to say, I, I pro- yeah, who knows? That sounds about the right time for the. It was limited Instagram. at the time. Yeah, I know yeah. they changed. I mean, there was no reels. There was no stories. There was none of this <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> oh, so much nonsense. Oh yeah. Anyways, <laughs> anyway, again, it's been a while since we haven't stuck the landing, but that's a show. We did it. <laughs> Thanks for having me, guys. Good fun. Yeah, man. Thanks, Thanks for joining so us. Much for coming.